Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey and you are here. Welcome. What's going on? How are you? Uh, if you're new to the show, uh, what's going on? Thanks for checking us out. Uh, you're either listening to this on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, TuneIn, any one of the podcast versions, or you're watching this on YouTube. Either way, it is there for you to enjoy. And hopefully, it's not the worst thing you've done with your time today, and you want to go back and watch some of the other episodes. Now, we're in the 60s. It is a weekly episode. You have 60-plus episodes of 30 minutes apiece to go back and catch up on. So if you're new, listen to them all while you work. What the heck? I mean, you got to maybe pick up something. Maybe. Or it's just something to listen to. I don't know. But if you're one of the elite, if you're somebody who makes sure to catch every episode, you give us the thumbs up on YouTube. You've given us a review on iTunes. Um, you've done all that. What's going on? It is because of you that I keep getting keep getting to keep 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 getting to do the show. Uh, so thank you very much for checking it out every single week. And if you are one of the cool kids, one of the elite, one of the People who does all that. They watch every episode or listen. They give us a thumbs up on YouTube. They have reviewed it on iTunes. And they order their supplies through me. Huh? <laughs> What's going on? It's because of you that I got to eat brand name beef jerky for lunch. So thank you. I appreciate that. It was like real meat crazy no but if you want to order your supplies through me please do that uh my number direct is 862-312-2026 yes that's my cell phone yes please text me anytime uh even if you got stuff in your cart and you just want me to get credit put that in it's like a virtual high five and it is awesome so please please do that um a couple of shout outs that i want to do this week is first uh matt clabeau what's going on man see kind of got that last name right uh curtis hoffman what's going on and this week's winner winner chicken dinner is juan antonio navarro what's going on man uh you won the uh credit for wcr the uh swag bag with the shirt and the stickers and the pins and everything all you need to do is just email me your information at josh at window cleaning resource and i'll get you that out and if you want to win every single week we do a giveaway do that now go to youtube check the episode out make sure to comment anything from your show sucks your show's awesome i don't care about your crooked nose or i like turtles do whatever just make sure to comment on that after giving us a thumbs up and you will be entered into every single week's drawing uh and next week you're going to be getting a 50 dollars credit for window cleaning resource and a swag bag so go do that now Every single week, if you are watching this on YouTube, right now is the time that we would like that thumbs up just to say what's going on, that you watch the show, that you halfway enjoyed it. So do that right now in three, two, one, thumbs up. Awesome. That's all you had to do. I appreciate that. If you haven't uh, given us a thumbs up, that truly does help us out. Uh, if you're watching or listening to this on iTunes, share the content. That is super, super awesome. Um, the convention is coming up. Man coming up next week from when this show airs so august uh 23rd and 24th at the uh marriott marquee in atlanta it's probably too late for you to get tickets if you're watching this but if you're going be geeked it's going to be amazing come find me and uh give me a high five or just give me crap i don't care i really appreciate always just meeting people that listen and follow the show it's awesome so please do that Whew. Okay, well that's our intro for this week. This week, we're doing a show that I could literally talk about every single week because I'm a huge, huge fan of route work and storefront. And that's what we're talking about this week is route work and storefront stuff. Same thing, yes, but guess what? SEO terms <laughs> want to go off of both, so that's what we're doing. But route work, if you love it or hate it, it is a part of window cleaning. Route work is kind of the quintessential original kind of window cleaning right storefronts doing the little stores like that's how a lot of people get started before they even get into houses they'll do rut work a lot of people start just on houses too i get that um but rut work is something that i'm a huge fan of and here's why so everybody says well i make minimum 65 dollars an hour if i'm cleaning a house per man hour Yes, it can be higher than that. Yes, you're awesome. You probably make more than that. But they go, oh, I'm not going to make $50 an hour doing route work. 
Okay. Uh, I get it. I get that you think your time is more valuable, and that's awesome. But what are you doing in January when things slow down? What are you doing in the middle of summer? What are you doing just in general? Route work fills those spots. Route work is frequency, which is something we don't have in our industry. Frequency is huge. I would rather take a full week of $50 an hour stuff than um, a week of... uh, $65 $65 an hour houses. And the reason is is because that week of $50 an hour, that'll happen every single week or every two weeks, depending on your frequency schedule, right? It will happen all the time. Now think about this. If you could fill, and this is, who cares if you got guys or not? I'm not talking about that. And I don't care. It's up to you and how you want to run it. Either way is right. But what if, what if you took and sold one week of uh, weekly work? What if you did that? 40 hours. Well, that's pretty cool, right? One week of work, that's not terrible to sell. But what if you sold it as weekly work? Now, I know not everybody goes weekly. This is just for demonstration purposes. What if it was two weeks of bi-weekly work, right? You then fill up an entire year, regardless of the season, regardless if there's leaves falling or school's in session or people on vacation. It doesn't matter. You've sold an entire year's worth of work by doing that. That's why route work is amazing. You see a lot of companies, the larger companies have huge routes. And the reason is, is because it's just constant cash flow. If you could have just one person, if you have employees or not, doesn't matter. But say you could start having an employee. And that employee just did 40 hours a week. Every single week they had a route. That's all they did. And say you paid them very well. Say you paid them Twenty dollars. We'll say on uh, the uh, commission basis, you know, for work, you're at thirty-eight percent, right? What if you made the rest of that money guaranteed every single week for the foreseeable future? That is freaking awesome. It's just income. It's just like janitorial. If you're touching in any of janitorial, I love to have a handful of janitorial accounts. The sucky part is when you know they don't show up at night and you're screwed and you got to leave the house at you know, nine at night to go do the janitorial, but it's constant money. It's always coming in. It's guaranteed to get you through the slow times. I've lived on route work. And when we first started up, we built a little bit of a route. That route work, I kid you not, we'd have a a week where we'd have a week or two of nobody calling you middle. I was in Wisconsin. You do not get windows done for months. There's like sporadic ones. Couple times a month, maybe somebody would call because they're in some kind of emergency. But what gets you through winter is route work and unfortunately snow plowing. But route work's that. So I can't say enough good things about route work. If you're not doing route work, try to sell yourself some route work. You can fill it any way you want. Fill the schedule of what you got now, but do it. It's so absolutely worth it. Are you fighting crackheads and, and bucket bobs? Yes. Yes, you are. But it doesn't matter. You don't need to have every single job. It'd be nice, but you're not going to land every single job. But storefronts and route, I already touched on this last year, but I want to talk about it again because it is that important to me. Now, I just talked to somebody maybe a week ago. And by the way, this show was brought to you by somebody who gave me the suggestion. If you are watching, comment down below on YouTube and let me know your name. I cannot believe I thought I wrote it down and I didn't. I would love to give you credit and shout out, say what's up. Thanks for the idea. I cannot remember. I didn't write it down like I thought I did. But anyway, um, and uh, I was talking to somebody else, and they were talking about that their route work was um, they were getting a buck fifty a pain, and I was talking about the national average being a dollar a pain per side for route work. Um, And he was talking about, oh man, he couldn't, you know, believe that it was that low. If you can get a dollar fifty per window, that is freaking awesome. High five, like. That's amazing. But realistically, and how I've done it for quite a while, now prices may be higher, whatever area you are in, but a dollar a pain per side is a really good price. Now, people say, well, a buck a window? I'm charging $10 a window on a house. Well, yes, you are. Yes, you are. $10 a window, that's two panes. So technically, it's $5 a window. Okay, I get it. For inside and outside. Okay, I get that. So technically, you're getting $5 on a house. On a route job for inside and outside, I'm getting uh, $2. So two to five, half the cost. Okay, that's fair, right? It's going to take me a tenth of the time. 
that it may take you to do that same window. Why? Because I'm going to be there every two weeks, man, or every week. It's a clean, relatively clean window. I'm cleaning a clean window. I'm just keeping up with them. So A, I can go super fast. They're commercial, so I don't have to stop and talk to little Miss Johnson who would love some company. I don't have to move uh, all the tchotchkes out of the window. I don't have to pet the dog and make small talk and, you know, wait for them to get the check signed. And do, I don't have to do all that. The downside is I got to drive. I got to drive a lot more. Now, I got jobs. Our minimum on ours is $10. So um, some people go, oh, my minimum is 60 bucks, Dude, that's not route work. If I can charge $10, it's going to take me maybe a minute, two minutes, two minutes. We'll say two minutes to do 10 simple windows, right? Um, even if it took you 30 seconds, okay? That's five minutes to do 10 windows. You just made 10 bucks in five minutes. Those numbers really equate to making uh, 120 bucks an hour, right? But you have drive time. So the tighter a route can be, the better and more money you're gonna make. That's obvious, but that's why it's called a route. Now, everybody has that downtown area where there's stores. Boom, 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 all the way down, right? If you could clean every single one of those, magic wand time, you clean every one of those, and you're just walking between one to the next one, collecting to the next one, collecting to the next one to collect, you're going to be doing $100 an hour. That's a pretty easy thing. And we have that in some of our routes. So we're making 100 plus an hour or darn near close to that. And I'm telling you, it's making a tight route or having more route jobs is going to make you more money. Now, if you have one job on the other side of town for 20 bucks, and you don't have any more route work, well, yeah, that sucks. That sucks balls, right? But that's why you got to keep making a route. Now, getting into route is a little bit harder because of that problem. Now, if you're paying your guys on commission, for you, it doesn't matter. You're making the same amount if they have to drive across town or they're in the same city, but you will piss them off. So your job is to sell, sell, sell. Now, Buck a pain per side is our rule. That's with us doing the window, we wipe the frame, go. But my main thing is I'm not going to want to move anything. Efficiency, speed on route is where you make your money. So if you're at a, a, a C store or a convenience store or a gas station that has kind of, there's tons of crap on the inside, a thousand signs. I don't even want to bid that, right? When I bid it, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, I'm only going to count the outside. And I'm going to put them on a frequency. That's the way that you make things run smoothly. Now, with route work, the big thing is you're always selling. ABS, always be selling. That is huge when it comes to route work. You're always going to have circulation in route work. Some people are going to find the bucket bob or the crackhead for five bucks and they're going to drop you. It's very hard to, and I've had great relationships on route, don't get me wrong, but it's very hard to um, build a rapport with somebody who doesn't give two dumps who it is that's actually showing up. I mean, a lot of people do. You don't even talk to them. You're seen and not heard, right? So you will lose people to price. Doesn't mean you should race to the bottom, but you will lose somebody for price. So you need to keep selling and always be selling to continue to grow those routes. Remember, when you add a job next to a place you already had a job, for $20. You're not just making $20. You're actually making like $22 because you've increased the price on the one right next to it. The tighter your uh, routes, the more you can fill. If you can do 40 hours of route every week, you're set forever. You could sell a lot slower to keep up for the gaps that are being made. But building a route, you always need to be selling. Now, how do you sell? How do you get into places there's two different kinds of route uh, jobs, I guess. Uh, one is a mom pa, and one is a corporate account. So, a mom pa is, um, you know, Beth's novelties. You know, if you go in there, Beth is probably the one that's behind the counter, or it's Beth's sister who's helping her out, you know, two days a week. But you're going to talk to somebody who makes the decisions. Now, if they're a slower, smaller boutique, they may do it themselves. I get that. Right? They may have somebody else. I get that. Those are all uh, the same thing that comes up with houses. Um, but if you're talking right to Beth from Beth's Boutiques or Beth's Novelties or whatever the heck I said, then she's the decision maker. So when you go in, you can talk to them and get them to say yes 
right away. Set up an appointment, uh, schedule it, and actually do the work right then and there if you want. That is awesome. But usually, a mom pa smaller place is going to be just that smaller. It's going to be a smaller job, like a $10, $15 job. When you get into a corporate place, now it's a whole nother beast. The corporate would be like going into a Walgreens, right? There's Walgreens all over, but guess what? You're not walking into, hey, Mr. Walgreen, how are you? I'd like to, right? You're not. You're talking to somebody who's somebody who works for somebody who works for somebody who then can make the decisions, right? So corporate accounts take more work, but the benefits of corporate accounts are are, are that you <laughs> that you get multiple stores or have the potential for multiple stores and they're usually higher ticket stores. Now, I bid 101 Walgreens. Uh, that was one of them that I bid. Now, I didn't actually get that account because the company I was bidding for didn't get the account, so of course I didn't. But doing something on that scale, that is like life-changing, business-changing kind of thing. Like that was one new employee doing just Walgreens. That's all they did, right? So stuff like that really, really is beneficial and worth the extra work. But I always tell guys, especially if I got salespeople, don't don't poo-poo the $10 account because that one's so much easier to get than the $50 account. You're not making as much money, but you could sell two or three of those compared to one of the other ones. Um, so those are the two different types. There's two different ways to really go about it too. The same approach for selling them, but it's the follow-up process that's a little bit different. Now with a mom and pa, this is how I do it. I walk into a place and I already have, we talked about this before, people always send me, I don't even have the file anymore, so I apologize, but just think this through. There is, I get carbon uh, copy forms. They're called NCR forms. They are two part uh, white and yellow. There's no carbon paper, but they transfer and I get it cut in half. So it's a half sheet of paper that is a yellow and white, you know, two part form. And on that, all I put is with boxes, I put the name for their name, date, uh, the rep. That's so I could track if I sold it or somebody else sold it. And then I put uh, windows, outside windows, inside uh, frequency and a signature spot for them and a signature spot for me with dates. That's it. Super simple. But what I do is before I walk into place, I fill it out. I count the windows because I'm walking up to the place. Go, okay, there's uh, four windows. That's going to be at our minimum $10. I put that down, $10 outside. I'm going to go for weekly. I'm going to put my name as rep and fill in their name as I'm going in. I'm going to put Beth's Novelties as the name, right? And if there's a rep there, then I'm going to write it on the back. But now I have a yellow and a white. I shred or open the two up. So I have now separate yellow, separate white. And on my clipboard, because I carry one of those like, closed clipboards i got it sitting behind the screen here but i'm not gonna grab it one of those ones that kind of holds papers but i got on that clipboard i have the yellow i have the white of the bid that i'm going to charge and i have my business card i have my brochure i have that all right there on the top when i walk up to the desk i say this to some degree i say hey is the owner or manager around and they go oh i'm the owner oh hey how are you nice to meet you my name is jersey uh, I'm actually from uh, XYZ Window Cleaning. Uh, we're just in the area. We actually do uh, XYZ over there and XYZ over there. I do those two buildings. Uh, we do those every week. So I thought I'd stop in and just kind of give you a price. And and as I'm doing that, I'm looking down because it, if you look at them in the eye, they're going to make eye contact with you. That's how you do it. But if you want them to look at your papers, you look at your papers. Then that's what they do. If you're not looking at them, they're going to look where you're looking. I look at my papers and my brochure and card. I just wanted to drop off this bid here and I hand them. The business card on the top, the yellow sheet in the middle, and then my brochure right on the back. All in one hand, I hand it to them. And now they got all this stuff, right? You're not a bucket bob first off. They go, whoa, look, this is a bunch of stuff. Uh, as you can see there, um, you're at 10 bucks. The word bucks always is less than dollars. If I say $10 or 10 bucks, 10 bucks sounds cheaper. Don't ask me why, it just does. Just the 9.99 theory, right? Where everything is under, under an even number. So I hand it to him and I say, and we can actually start uh, this week if you'd like. And they, and I shut up. And now I've not asked a question, right? I'm not asking yes or no. I'm not uh, doing an implied close or any of these fancy closes. I just shut up. They look at it go, oh, oh, yeah, okay. Well, now instantly they're going to tell me one of three things right away. They're going to tell me uh, if they're interested, obviously. If they're um, not interested or they're coming up with something, go, oh, you know what? Uh, I actually do my own windows. Okay, best novelties. I get that. 
Or they say, oh, we have someone. Or they say, oh, you know what, we're not even doing them right now. Those are their three options. They do them themselves, they have somebody else do them, or they don't do them at all. Those are the only three options. There's not really another option. But here's your rebuttal on all of them. If they say, oh, I do it myself. Say, oh, oh, awesome, man, that has to really uh, uh, save you some money. But unfortunately, I know you have a million hats. So going with a company like us, who now it's our responsibility to make sure that your first impression of people coming into your shop is clean all the time, that may take a big kind of uh, headache off of your plate. You've probably got enough stuff to do. Now, again, haven't asked a question. Either if business is slow, sometimes people will say this anyway, but they go, oh, yeah, I know, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that, you know. That's how you play it off and see how much time. Now, if they're one of those people who always uh, tells everybody or has the persona of being busy, oh, yeah, no, you know, I just can't get them right. Or I just, just listen. We have two ears and one mouth for that exact reason. People will always tell you what you need to hear. You just have to pick it out. If they say, oh, yeah, you know, I do it. I just, I just don't get it right. I'm just not very good. At it. <laughs> but I do it. You know, I do it myself, and uh, it does save us some money. And I have the time. And out of that whole speech, I heard, I do it, but I don't do it good. So I'm not very happy with how I do it. So that's why. Oh yeah, no, no. If you have the time to do it, that's awesome. You know. But if you, if you're doing them and they just don't turn out right, it's almost as bad as if you didn't do them at all, right? Like, well, yeah, I know that actually is pretty true. Another thinking like, oh gosh, yeah, no, I like. Listen, I'm not going to tell you guys how to sell, read a book. I'm telling you, read a book, listen to a podcast just on selling, take a class, go to a conference that's based on selling in your area. They have a lot of selling is key. You're always selling yourself. But after all that, that's the first option. If I walk in and hand it to the same thing, blah, 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 here's my stuff. And they go, oh yeah, we actually use John's window cleaning. I go, oh, awesome. Yeah, I've met him. He's actually a really good guy. Yeah, I know. We really appreciate loyalty ourselves also. Uh, how's he doing for you? Doing pretty good? Um, so I've implied they're going to say yes, right? Because I don't want them to see that I'm trying to steal anything. But I'm saying, oh, he's a good guy. I, I really don't want to step on people's toes. You're an asshole if you purposely try to screw somebody out, right? But uh, it's going to happen. You're going to lose accounts to other people. And other people are going to lose them to you. That's how you build a business. But... Um, I then open it up. They then get to say, oh, yeah, no, he does a good job. I haven't seen him in a while. Uh, or if they leave it open, then I always say, oh, does he come pretty regularly? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's usually pretty good, you know, going on. Yeah, that's the hard thing. A lot a lot of times some of the window cleaners that um, they do this almost on the side or, you know, route's not really the big focus of theirs. Sometimes they're not as... Uh, 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 regular as they should be but we strive ourselves we put you on a week schedule if you ever do decide to go with us and it's always done that week rain or shine it is done that week oh wow okay great that's the rebuttal for the people now i'm still gonna leave and even if they go oh yeah i've had john for years he's he, we, we just love him here oh great i genuinely love loyalty from our customers so i respect that on your end if anything ever changes keep my info on file put my card in there and if he ever doesn't show up or stops coming or even decides to retire give us a call and i would love to be the one to uh fill his position right you're not pushy but they're gonna go yeah no this guy really he didn't he didn't if you attack ah oh, well yeah you had him for a long time but he sucks i mean if you did you know he beats his wife did you know that did you, then those people are going to go, what is this a-hole? Like, I don't want to hide. But if you're just pleasant about it, you know you're going to run into it. Leave your information anyway. Now, here's the thing. Follow up on the other side. You're going to remember all this. And when you walk out of the store, anything that they tell you on the back of that white half sheet of paper is where all my notes go. So I'm going to write down, they have John's doing it. And sometimes I'll even ask, like, oh, yeah, really? How's John's pricing? Is it pretty on par with us? They usually go, oh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty close. Or I always will leave that open, too. Like, oh, what are you paying with John, if you don't mind me asking? If they say, nah, I don't really want to tell you. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to step overstep bounds. I just want to see if we were on par with everybody else. Something like that. But I'll write that down so I know all of the information because I'm going to keep following up. Follow-up is king. We'll talk about that in a second. And the last one is, oh, you know what? We don't have anybody do the windows right now. Or we're just, we're just not keeping up with them. Or I try to get them done every now and then, but I just, we're not. And I always go, well, you know, not that there's anything wrong with it. That's one of the reasons I came in here. I kind of noticed that. And then, and then, it's like talking to your neighbor. Like, oh, I noticed you're not edging anymore, huh? Did your edger break? All of a sudden, they go, oh, crap. I thought that was like nobody was no nobody saw that. Like it's not a problem. Now all of a sudden it brings it to their forefront. It's the same thing on the other side. Without insulting them. 
I don't go and go, yeah, man, you look like a dumpster from out there. I didn't even want to come in here. I thought you guys were closed. It looks so crappy, right? You don't want to do that. That does not sell jobs. If it does, tell me. I'd, maybe maybe I just never got that route. But it is nice to open up that door and go, well, if you have nobody, we would love to give you a trial. We don't have contracts. I always tell that. We don't do contracts because I figure if we're doing great work at a great price, you're going to have us come back regardless if what a piece of paper says, you know, or what a signature means. And people go, wow, that's really nice. I always say, even if you want to give us a try, give us a try for, you know, a week. You can stop it anytime you want. There's no penalty for that. And there's no, you know, fee. We just want to be able to show you what we can do and hopefully help you out. People especially on that side who don't get a, if you're stuck in a year contract yes you're building value to your business because now you have contracts telling the next person who's buying your business that you have guaranteed funds but it's a harder sell when you say oh i'd love for you to give us a try for one year you know you're stuck into a contract if you get out of the contract there's a 299 dollars close clause they don't do that like cell phones don't do that anymore why do you on a window cleaner now people say well if you don't do contracts they don't have to go with you I know. Guess what? Every one of your residential customers is the same exact way. Work hard. Do a good job at a good price and you're going to keep them because they don't care. They want somebody to be in there and never think about it again. We've had route customers for 10 years plus that we've done their windows every single week or two for 10 for flipping years, right? They don't care. They just, oh, here, they're here. It's done. They don't care. It's just an expense. Awesome. So those are the three ones in the modern pot. When you get into a corporate place, it's way different. I hand them the same information with the same spiel. Usually I say, hey, is there a owner manager around? They go, oh, well, yeah, uh, I'm just a desk person, but let me get the manager for you. Awesome. I want to keep moving up that chain. Sometimes they say, no, manager's not in right now. I always will say to that rebuttal, oh, great. Well, I'm sorry I missed him, but uh, my name is Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. We do a bunch of other places. Um, and I just wanted to drop off some information on window cleaning. I know he has to have somebody doing that. And I just wanted to see if we could maybe help him out a little bit. Uh, and I'll give him the information. Could you pass that forward to him? Uh, what's his name, by the way? And, oh, it's John Smith. I'm like, oh, John Smith. Do you have a cell phone number I can catch up with him next week when he's in? Usually they'll give him a number. They go, no, just you can call the store and ask for him. Okay, I'll just I'll write that. I'll write all those notes down. Because later when I catch up, when I do my follow-ups, I'm going to know all everything I need to know. I'm going to know it. And I'm going to be able to uh, go ahead and sound like I remembered him because they stand out, but yet I have it all written down. If the manager comes up, go, hey, I'm Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. We're in the area. We do a bunch of other places, this place, this place, this place. And I just thought I would drop off some information, information on us and see if there's uh, any need that you might have for window cleaners. Well, that's a question, but it's open-ended. They know everything they need to know, and they usually go, oh, yeah, you know, we got somebody that's actually done through corporate. Oh, awesome. Do you have a corporate number? I can give them a shout, so I don't even have to bother you, right? They don't want to be bothered with it. That's why they told you no in the first place. But you're going to go up to the corporate. Sometimes people will do that. Sometimes they'll go, ah, oh, yeah, we can't actually give out that number. Ah, oh, no worries. What store number is this? So uh, when I do track that number down, I'll, I'll let them know. They'll tell you a store number, right? It's written down. Even if they don't tell you a store number, you still have the address. No big deal. But if they say, oh, we got somebody now, it's the same spiel as the mom and pa because the manager may be the one that, that does everything. So giving them the information, saying this line, saying, well, uh, let me leave you with my information. I'll call you in a week or two, kind of follow up, see where you're at with uh, things, if anything's changed. They always go, well, that's the conversation ender because they know I'm leaving. They go, oh, yeah, no, no worries. But I write down the number, and guess what I do? Mind-blowing, I actually call them back. Now, here's the thing. Follow-ups in route are so much more important. I'm talking five times more important, 10 times more important. It's actually about a thousand percent of our closes compared or 10 times the closes we get in follow-ups than first time. People always go, well, man, I was out there all day and I didn't get one person to sign up. Awesome. What do you mean awesome? I, awesome. You got a whole day's worth of leads. Ah, oh, yeah, but I mean, they said they said no and they got somebody else and, you know, uh, so-and-so is going to call me back. and pff, Neat. I don't care. I'm not letting fate happen. I'm going to make fate happen, right? Follow-ups are 100,000 million percent 
better. That's a number I pulled out of my butt if you're doing the math at home, but <laughs> that's the truth. I'm going to write all the information on the back, and guess what? On the front of the sheet, and before any notes, I always write the date, because I know on 8-1, I was here. So what's going to happen is I'm going to put it in a tickler folder. Yes, funny name, but it's a very, very in, interesting and well thought out plan. What I'm going to do is I'm putting it in a folder. Now, a tickler folder is very simple. It's like an accordion folder and it just has dates on it. 1 through 31. What I'm going to do is put it in seven days from when I was there the first time. Now, if it's Monday, I'm putting it in seven days. So on the 8th from uh, the 1st, on the 8th, I'm going to put it in there because guess what? That is next Monday. I'm going to call up every single day. You're splitting your day into new generation, ABS, always be selling, and you're sending your day into follow-ups. Follow-ups can be done in the morning. Follow-ups usually should not be done after 2 or 3 in the afternoon because the people that you need to talk to aren't going to be there. They usually leave a little early. So earlier in the day is usually better. What I'll do is I'll call and say, hey, uh, this is Jersey calling from XYZ Window Cleaning. We were just in there last week on Monday, and uh, I'm just calling to follow up with that uh, bid. And if I have the name of who I talked to, I'm going to ask for them. Say that spiel. If there was no name and it was just the main person at the desk, I'm still going to ask them. They usually will go, oh, my gosh, I'm sorry. I wasn't working that day. I'm not quite sure. I don't have it in front of me. Um, you know, can I transfer you over to the manager or... Uh, the owner or the blah, blah, blah. Yes, absolutely. And I'm going to say the same thing on their voicemail or talk to them. Because a lot of times they'll go, oh, gosh, no, actually, you know what? I don't even have that anymore. must have thrown it away. All of a sudden their brain's going, oh, this guy's like legit. He's not a crackhead. He wasn't doing this for beer money, right? That's the big thing about follow-ups is that usually when people say no or they say we have somebody or they say anything to end the conversation, they expect you to just never come back again because that's what route guys do. When you get these bucket bobs going, and, I'll do it for five dollars. You know, they're they're never coming back until they need more money. They'll ask again. You tell them the same thing and they go away. But when you actually call, they go, Oh, this guy's legit. Yeah, uh, let me uh, let me see if I can. I forgot to run that over with my manager. Let me talk. Awesome, because guess what? As soon as I'm done, I'm writing the notes of what we just talked about and I'm putting it in a tickler folder. Seven days. You got that. Seven days. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every single day that I'm out there, there will be calls to be made within seven days. And then they will double those calls and I will keep calling somebody every single week until they give me a definite one way or the other. If you call and somebody goes, hey, you know what? No, actually, I remember you coming in. Uh, we used, I'm going to say, I see it on here. Well, it says uh, last time you used John's window cleaner. I was just calling to see if anything has changed since last week. Uh, if John's still coming in, doing a great job, uh, blah, 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 blah. I think, oh, yeah, you know what? We've had John forever. He's a great guy. Uh, yeah, we're sticking with him for now, but I got your information. I would say, oh, yeah, definitely no problem. Again, really love the loyalty. Uh, we'll check back in a month or so. In a month or so. So guess what? I'm now going to put that in. You got it. 30 days. A month from now, I'm going to put it in the tickler folder. You see how that tickler folder is going to add up. So if you go selling route, for a month, you're going to have a ton of route to catch up on, and you're just going to have tons and tons of leads. Um, if somebody ever says, which I don't think I've ever had it, but if they go, no, stop calling me, I will throw the thing out. That's not a big deal, right? But no one ever says that, and here's the reason. is because as soon as you walk out of the door, within two minutes, they forget you. They have so much other stuff going on. They got customers coming in. They got to make the food. They got to uh, sell the products, get the bags. They got to clean the bathroom. They got so much crap to do. They're not going to remember you. When you call back in a week, all of a sudden it's back in their brain. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Hey. Uh, yeah. Now it's in their brain. They don't care that you call the week. They're not going to care that you call a week after that. But you're always going to be following up because following up is key. And here's another one. If you're always in the area and you sold the place or attempted to sell the place because you were in the area in the first place. If you're building route, what happens when you stop in? Hey, how are you? Oh, good, good, good. Hey, I'm Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. We were just in here last month, but uh, I just wanted to stop in again and see if anything's changed. We're over here just doing the places across the street. Guess what? You're always in there. Always in there. You're always calling. You're always in there, and you will get that work. I'm telling you, the first time a call happens, just like EDDM, first time a call happens, you're going to have a lower close rate than the second time. And it's going to keep going that way. You're going to get these people. And even if they don't use you, guess what? 
you made 10 contacts with them. They always see, oh, here's the window cleaner. Hey, Jersey, how are you? No, we're still happy with the window cleaner, you know, but oh, no worries. Just stopping by, you know, I'm just uh, swinging by. I appreciate it, guys. Have a great one. But guess what? The soon, the, 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 the instant, Johns decides to disappear. Or guess what? Johns leaves a streak that would have never bothered them before. But now you're in their brain because you're always in there. And you know what? This John guy, we've had him a long time, but you know something, his qualities is going downhill. You know, he's getting older. I know he's going to be retiring anyway. He just doesn't care anymore. When we first got him, he cared. Now he doesn't seem to care. But this other guy, this other guy cares. They're going to call you before anybody else. And guess what? As soon as somebody else comes in, the old dreaded fish or whatever, next person comes in, hey, I'm from Fish Window Clean. Go, oh, yeah, no, no worries. We'll take your information. Guess what? You're on the docket, baby. You're already second place. Those people now have to get in line. So you are securing your position for it to happen. Now, I've had jobs happen. It took almost two years of just stopping. And now the longer between times and things like that, I'd stop in or wave. I even had a lady, I would knock on her window when I saw her work. And I'd knock on the door and just kind of wave to her. And she'd wave back, you know, and we'd go on our business. She had her information. And I was always stopping in like once a month. Um, and it took almost two years. Like I said, finally she called and she said, uh, you know something? She said, uh, the guy is, I'm not even going to use his name, XYZ. He, every time he's been here for the past few times, it's getting farther and farther. I don't know if he's going to show up or not. And you know something, the last time he came in, there were so many drips on the window that I just, that's all I could stare at with those drips. And I go, oh man, that's too bad. You know, I've not heard any negative things about him before, but I know he's been in business for a long time. I just hope everything's not, yeah, yeah, but, uh, we're, we're going to want to give you a try. They've already called you. It's already been in the brain. You go, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Oh, that's really awesome. Guess what? All that work is paid off. That route. Yes, it's a lot of work to build a route. It's a lot of work. But the frequency, the money that you're getting. Think about a job. $10 a week for even numbers. That doesn't sound like anything. That's a $5,200 year. Wait, $520. $520 year. That's one job of five minutes a week is $520. That is a huge house that you're going to clean once a year. One house is not, for the most part, what we look at national averages, is not going to pay you $520 a year like that one stupid little itty-bitty route job. Because that other job, they may go once a year, they may go twice a year, they may find somebody else, they may move. But that route job you'll have every single time and every job around there, you're going to keep making more money. And now if you're in the area and your trucks are logoed like we talked about and they don't look like rolling dumpsters, you're going to get other people because you're always in the area. If my truck's in front on your street, every single week you see my trucks and my guys walking around, same outfit, uniform with all the bells and whistles, walking down the street to clean windows, I'm going to stay in the front of your brain and you're going to know me and I'm going to close you. That's route. Route is tenacious. Route is not hard, but it takes a lot more work than you think. But when you get it, you get it. And guess what? All you have to do is keep them happy. Don't do streaks. Don't do smears and be nice. You're already nice. You already do great work. You're going to keep those people forever. And you're going to keep making that money. So go out there and do route. If you haven't already, do route. Follow up. If you're not following up, you're wasting leads. You've just gone out and generated leads. That's what selling route is in the first place. Close them afterwards do it say i'm gonna give it 10 minutes or uh, uh 10 hours a week right uh, two hours a week every monday for two hours i'm gonna do this do it i'm guaranteed you're gonna keep rolling it in and you're gonna keep going and it's gonna get stronger and better and moving that boulder is just gonna get easier all the single uh every single time that you go in there so do route do storefront whatever you call it do it make a bunch of money get frequency baby and still go to the convention. Like, make it happen. Now, if you're still watching or listening, what's going on? This is like the longest episode ever. I'm sorry, but I got to rambling. Like I said, here's the thing. If you call an order for supplies, any supplies you order through me right now, you're going to get 5% off. And here's the code. The code is ROUTE. All you got to do, call me or text me, which is always better. Text me up. Say, what up, Jersey? I got a bunch of stuff in my cart. I want to put it in. Keyword ROUTE. Or... And I want to use the route, Pat, whatever. I'm going to give you a discount. We're going to make it happen. You're going to become one of the elite. You're going to order supplies through me. And I'm going to give you virtual high fives. And if you see me, 
at the huge convention. Please stop, say what's up. I love listen, watch the podcast. Tell me it sucks. Tell me it's awesome. Tell me my nose is crooked. I don't care. But just talk to me and uh, take a picture with me. Post it somewhere. Tag it, WCR Nation. Uh, and it's going to be awesome. So go do that. Check it out. Be the elite. My number one more time is 862-312-2026. Shoot me a text. Be my friend. Let's do this. Go out there. Sell some route. Until next week, be route-tastic and be epic.